What's up, Crypto Crew? Welcome back. Or if this is your first time, I'm Captain Crypto Might, actively escaping the matrix, scoping out the crypto oceans. If you like your odds, get on the boat, stay up to date, thumbs up, and join the hunt. Into the boat! Crypto Crew, I personally made it a point to myself to continue to research Caspa. I believe there's much more to learn as well as there's much to share. And that includes many of the Bitcoin community, some of which are starting to embrace Caspa, some of them, well, aren't. So, so to me, what Caspa is perfect at is it's perfect at convincing somebody that knows a little bit about Bitcoin to buy Caspa. Shout out to Caspa Onion for bringing this video under my attention. Now, this is not a personal attack to Bitcoin, not crypto whatsoever. Rather, this is about education because the gentlemen from Bitcoin, not crypto present a case study of what happens if you speak before you hear the actual matter. I will leave the link to that full segment below so you can see for yourself. But please be kind and patient with people, even if you disagree with them. I think we should be all humble enough that we as the Caspa community should should continue to be educated on Caspa and then help others understand Caspa. I really think the technology behind Caspa is unique and is going to work in a cash-based system. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Before we start Crypto Crew, always remember to keep your crypto investments safe. Practicing self-custody is key, especially during the 2025 bull run. In my personal opinion, the Tangent Wallet is your best option. Plug and play, easy to use, and the most affordable cold storage out there. There. So if you wish to order your Tangent Wallet today, you can get 10% off using code CryptoCrew. Link in the description box below. Thanks so much for your support in advance. And may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you all. I've been Bitcoin being harassed by Caspa people on Twitter because I talked negatively about it once. That's okay. Anyway, yeah. Crypto Crew, this video from Bitcoin Not Crypto was a seven to eight minute segment from a two hour live stream a few days ago. Now, they were about to finish when they received a $20 super chat from a self-proclaimed Bitcoin maxi asking about Caspa. What followed was a response with a multitude of wrong claims that were left unsubstantiated, meaning none of these three gentlemen showed any evidence proving they simply haven't studied Caspa just yet. Uh, it says, I love y'all. TradFi inflation forced me to research Bitcoin, however, Bitcoin forced me to learn Caspa. I found more about Bitcoin when I learned about, or I learned more about Bitcoin when I learned about Caspa. Doesn't that spark a question? Uh, I guess the the question so so to me what caspa is perfect at is it's perfect at convincing somebody that knows a little bit about bitcoin to buy caspa it's that it's like when you don't know anything about crypto you buy xrp you buy a bunch of crap when you know a little bit about bitcoin caspa is right there to to say like you don't know enough about decentralization we're going to convince you that this is the better bitcoin it's for people that have a little bit of knowledge about bitcoin then they buy caspa so the gentleman in the top right corner his screen name is forrest huddle speaking the most in today's vid and forrest claims that caspa is perfect in convincing someone who knows a little bit about bitcoin appealing to the quote-unquote semi-informed ironically in the same breath force makes a comparison with xrp now if the crypto ocean was a spectrum xrp and caspa will be on opposing ends of that spectrum unlike xrp caspa was fair launched and is actually decentralized the same foundation bitcoin was founded on as a matter of fact caspa originator jonathan sampolinski was part of the early day bitcoin community in the early to mid 2010s where he brought forth revolutionary ideas on where bitcoin should go next we're envisioning for the long term, a Bitcoin that processes several thousand transactions per second. We were interested in doing so in a secure manner. We stick to the bit, uh, ordinary Bitcoin model, miners mine blocks, and this is an in-chain solution to the scalability security trade-off. You can think of 2,000 or 10,000 transactions per second, that's what Visa processes nowadays, so we would like to get there. Keep in mind, Crypto Crew, Jonathan Sampolinski proposed his vision way before many of today's prominent Bitcoin maxis, such as Michael Saylor and Jack Maulers, were even involved in Bitcoin way before Bitcoin garnered all the attention it has today. We're talking about a highly influential computer scientist and researcher, widely recognized for his groundbreaking contributions to the field of blockchain technology, and Jonathan Sampolinski, who has been cited in dozens of white papers of many of today's 
prominent crypto projects. And so the person who donated the super chat to these guys, again, a Bitcoin maxi stated he was forced to learn Casper because of Bitcoin and the statement completely flew over these three gentlemen's heads. The donor literally said he learned more about Bitcoin when he learned about Casper. And you know why that is? Because unbeknownst to these three gentlemen, Casper was built on the same foundation Bitcoin was. So you keep the same ethos, the same principles of Bitcoin, I mean, a Kamoto system, proof of work, blocks, transactions, all the things you're familiar with. And the vision of 10 blocks per second is that, you know, things become internet speed crypto, internet speed proof of work. And you're talking about a project that was developed by a man who was there when nobody in the world outside of crypto really cared about Bitcoin. Please let that sink in. Give me a second, I'll switch it up. Not only did Jonathan originate a true decentralized project in Casper, and we'll go more into the decentralization aspect later, but Jonathan Sampolinski, together with his mentor Aviv Sohar, is notoriously known as one of the few world experts on Bitcoin security. That's not me as a buyer. Bias Casper investor sensationalizing things. That's according to the godfather of smart contracts, Nick Zabo. There is a guy named Aviv Zohar who's written some great papers. One of them is on Ghost, which is what Ethereum is based on. Um, and he's got a follow up to that whose name escapes me. And he's also written a co authored a great paper on attacks against Bitcoin from the underlying network. So he's one of the experts on the security of Bitcoin, which is a uh, skill and knowledge set in scarce supplies. Jonathan Sampolinski's track record is undeniable. I'll leave a link in the description box below so you can see for yourselves. But simply put, there are over 4,200 citations on Google proofing Jonathan Sampolinski's body of work, which was to help elevate Bitcoin and the crypto ocean to what it is today. That's the man who originated Casper. That's the foundation Casper was built on. Caspa has serious problems with decentralization. I mean, there's estimates of how much this chain grows, but there's 10 transactions per second. I'm not sure if that was a slip of the tongue, but that's simply incorrect. Caspa processes much more than 10 transactions per second. Maybe you meant to say Caspa runs on 10 blocks per second, making Caspa about 6,000 times faster than Bitcoin as is, without giving up decentralization, which leads us to the next point. Casper has serious problems with decentralization. I mean, there's estimates of how much this chain grows, but there's 10 transactions per second. If you think about the amount of data that creates, it makes it impossible to run as an individual to run an archival node of Casper. So there's a few data centers out there that are capable of the bandwidth of the hardware requirements to uh, keep up a ledger like that. Um, and that's who you're trusting. That's who you end up trusting if you're if you're running a pruned node. This is another major criticism Casper gets. Casper has quote unquote serious problems with decentralization. As of February 2025, a full archival node requires about 2.5 terabytes of SSD storage and about 30 gigabyte RAM. I'm not a techie by any means, but I know that those requirements are well within reach for many enthusiasts and not just data centers. People run it on like uh, 10 year old laptops, they run it on Raspberry Pis, on old cell phones, and the operational costs are completely marginal. Uh, we took this idea and we adapted it to DAGs and we added to it uh, another novel protocol we invented for pruning the block data. And as a result, we get security that is similar to Bitcoin, but the amount of storage remained fixed. One result is that even when we are working in the full capacity of uh, 3000 transactions per second, we see that uh, in the latest version it takes 20 minutes to sync a new node. So not only is the Casper network more than capable technically for regular people like you and me to run a node anywhere at any time, unlike Ethereum or Solana, running a node on Casper is much cheaper. I mean, you have people in the Casper community running nodes on $100 computers that are 10 year old or older. And again, I'm not a techie, but I don't think these qualify as data centers, which proves Casper is both accessible and in fact, fully decentralized. The beauty and the real value of Bitcoin is that there's an ethos and community sense that node runners are the most important aspect of it. With every other cryptocurrency, that is not the case. And that is the huge differentiator with Bitcoin. So Caspa making it next to impossible to run an archival node means that there's no ethos of, of looking out for the node runner. 
Forrest Hoddle makes a valid point. Bitcoin is community driven and the note runners are essential for the network. And the same can be said for Casper. Keep in mind Crypto Crew, one of the biggest Bitcoin mining companies in the world, Marathon Digital, endorses Casper publicly. As next to Bitcoin, the only crypto coin Marathon Digital mines at the moment is in fact Casper. One kilowatt of energy for me generates eight cents of Bitcoin value. One kilowatt of Caspa generates a dollar. I can use that dollar to buy Bitcoin. Caspa so is a... It's a proof of work coin. Got it's it. It's one of the up and coming coins. Got it. Caspa's had a great run. It's gone from under a penny to over 18 cents. Now I understand Bitcoin Maxi's love for Bitcoin. And if some new project comes along making big claims, I could imagine someone invested into Bitcoin to be in denial, maybe react hostile or indifferent to such claims. And yes, the Casper community has made claims in times past. Ironically, the crux of all these claims all stems from the vision Jonathan Sampolinski initially had for Bitcoin back in the mid-2010s. We're envisioning for the long term a Bitcoin that processes several thousand transactions per second. We were interested in doing so in a secure manner. We stick to the bit, uh, ordinary Bitcoin model, miners mine blocks, and this is an in-chain solution to the scalability security trade-off. If you can think of 2,000 or 10,000 transactions per second, that's what Visa processes nowadays, so we would like to get there. When you know a little bit about Bitcoin, Caspa is right there to, to say, like, you don't know enough about decentralization. We're going to convince you that this is the better Bitcoin. It's for people that have a little bit of knowledge about Bitcoin, then they buy Caspa. And although Forrest Huddle tried to explain Caspa from his point of view, he did so without offering any empirical evidence. Granted, this was a question that came in last minute on a live stream, so I'm sure none of these gentlemen expected that. But that proves my point, which I propagate on this channel. Study to show thyself approved, a workman not needed to be ashamed. Of course, that's speaking about spiritual matters and the word of truth, but it also applies practically, including studying the crypto ocean. Now, I don't know these gentlemen personally. They may be cool and friendly in person. However, on the subject of Caspa and responding to a genuine question from someone who, in his own words, is a Bitcoin maxi, the three gentlemen from Bitcoin Not Crypto misrepresented Caspa and shared a lot of misinformation in the process. That said, there's much more to cover than I could in one video, so I might have to do another part on the rest of that segment if you want me to. Species that cannot adapt become extinct. Bitcoin, seven transactions per second. Caspa, infinitely more. Evolution continues. Think Caspa. Again, link for that seven to eight minute Bitcoin Not Crypto segment below. And if you visit Bitcoin Not Crypto, please be kind and patient. Just because we disagree doesn't mean we shouldn't be gracious. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Stick around. Fix your mind before you get to the grind. And with that said, let's continue to escape the matrix. Let's continue to be on the lookout for the next big thing here on the crypto ocean. Grow in grace and let's make some crypto waves. Say I.